Hey everyone, this is uh, Dr. Clyde Letzum, and today what we're going to be uh, looking at is writing a um, program in vPython in order to simulate the motion of a charged particle in a magnetic field and also in case there's an electric field uh, within the same area. Um, I'm using this lab here that I found online, uh, full disclosure. This is a lab apparently that's used at Purdue University uh, for their Physics 272 lab. Uh, apparently this is lab 11 for them. And so I have my students doing uh, this lab. Um, and so at least the feedback I've gotten from them so far is that they're having a hard time working on this. So this video is just to give them an idea as to how they're going to, um, you know, work with the program and then kind of figure out what they're going to need at the end. Uh, on the left side here is the lab. Uh, what they should see at the end. And the left side here is the lab and on the right side here is my code. You will only be able to see part of the code. The idea is not to give you the answer so you can run off and turn this in to me. The point is to give you at least a beginning and make sure you understand what's going on so that it hopefully it makes it easier for you to write the code. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to go through the entire lab. Again, my students have access to this. And if you're watching this, uh, this is online. Purdue University put it online so you can look it up real quick. And so for the lab, it tells you to start off by using for them what was lab number one. For my group, uh, this would be normally this would be lab number three. Now, the thing about this is you don't actually need the lab from before because at the bottom here they actually tell you this is what your code should look like after you've made adjustments to lab number one okay so um, you're gonna make adjustments to it so it looks similar to this the only difference I'd say to change in here is that instead of having these first two lines in this order I'm gonna ask you to change them so that they're actually in this order whenever I put them in this order I get an error I don't know why that is but when I put them in the order here shown on the right side of your screen I don't get the error okay from there you'll notice that they say define the constants remember this is a, a comment the code does not or pardon me the uh, compiler does not actually read comments so you can write whatever you want in there I just wrote constants they wrote define constants and they define the uh, value uh, for e uh, as shown here, so did I, and then they, def def they define, pardon me, the value for the uh, K constant um, that you use when you're looking for the electric field. And then they have a section here where you have the initial values, uh, created objects, and calculations. Now from here again, this is what you're going to start with. From here again, uh, you they now go to the section where they're um, defining some constants and they start off by saying okay they're gonna define a constant um, named B as in boy B as in boy okay and this is gonna be represent this is gonna represent the magnetic field and remember the magnetic field is a vector and they said that they want you to start off with this having a value of zero okay for the magnitude so over here if you look on the right I define my variable B which is going to be used for the magnetic field uh, as a vector and if I have 0 0 0 as the um, values here then it also has a um, it's gonna have a magnitude of uh, 0 okay because remember it's the X component Y component and then the Z component they also said to then you're going to create a scale factor here for B and I did I create a scale factor for B equaling one um, you'll notice here that I have this part here commented out this I'm going to actually change a little bit later because I'm going to change the scaling factor of the vectors that are going to be created for the B vector and the E vector um, and again the, the, the reason why you want to use these scale factors is so that you can make the arrows that you're going to make later on um, the correct size or not correct size but a, a suitable size so that you can see the uh, electric field magnetic field and you can see the atom that's going to be uh, on the screen okay uh, you're gonna do the same thing here with the e vector you're gonna create a electric field 
vector and you'll see that I did that over here with a scaling vector uh, for the electric field uh, over here and you'll notice I did that and again I put the comments uh, then they said they want you to set a time interval uh, of 1 times 10 to the minus 11 seconds and you can see I did that over here 1 e raised to the uh, negative 11 and then they want you to start with a initial time of t0 and I did that now the rest of the code you're not going to see on the screen because this is where I want you to start using your mind and what you understand about vPython in order to um, write the code okay so over here now you'll notice it says that the uh, red sphere here you're gonna make an atom okay uh, you're gonna do it just as they say here if you need some help uh, with this all right inside of uh, our desire to learn uh, area here there's a link to a vPython manual or tutorial now if you think about it, atom is kind of like a sphere so you're going to click on sphere over here once you get over here and you'll notice that it has information on how to create the sphere they call it ball you're going to create you and name it atom and you can actually see how to uh, fill in the information uh, as they indicated uh, on their screen or on their uh, lab okay so um, go back we're gonna go back over here now uh, to this screen so now you know how to create the atom you're gonna use the information from here uh, along with the information from the tutorial they ask you to, to, to uh, define the mass of the um, atom and the charge for the atom and look they actually tell you what the values are and how to uh, make it that way so that you get the charge of E and the mass of the atom as being uh, this value here okay you're going to continue following the instructions they're going to tell you now let's see that they want you to give the um, the atom of velocity an initial velocity in the x direction of this meters per second square no component in the y no component in the z okay and they want you to uh, define now the um, momentum for the atom and remember if you uh, uh, if you recall there's a way to calculate the momentum using the velocity and mass I'm not gonna tell you what that is I want you to uh, look that up if you do not remember it okay and you're gonna write an equation for that in order to define the momentum and then they give you some additional information in here you can again read through the lab okay then they want you to create a vector or a couple vectors here one to represent the direction for the um, or the position, the initial position for the uh, magnetic field um, vector. And they actually want you to create a uh, position here for the electric field vector also. And you'll see the information that's here. In that definition, okay, notice they said arrow. So again, you can go over here to the um, vPython uh, tutorial. It says arrow. It tells you along here how to go about creating the arrow. It tells you the information that you're going to need, okay, or possible information. All right. So again, you can go to that to help you figure some stuff out. Um, or if if if, if, um, if you all remember, we did this lab also, or a similar lab uh, where we did uh, use vectors and and uh, spheres from before. You can go back to that lab also and see how you did it from before. Okay, you're going to put that information in, you're going to also include this here, and then you're going to construct your while loop. Okay, now the thing is about the while loop um, that they did not mention here that you're going to need. You're going to need, after you type in while one colon, you're going to need to indicate what the rate um, that the while loop will be looping in. Uh, I would suggest doing rate uh, open parentheses 100 close parentheses. Okay. Um, I think that will give you a good enough speed um, in terms of how uh, quickly the uh, the video or the visual uh, portion is actually refreshed. Okay. Uh, once you've done that, then you're going to uh, and remember they said here everything past this area here is going to be inside the while loop. So everything past down here is going to be inside the while loop. You're going to create an equation for your total uh, net force. 
and you're going to use this information that's in here in order to create that remember you already have an electric field you defined above you have a magnetic field defined above you have a charge you defined above and the velocity of the um the particle the atom okay that you defined above you're going to use that information in order to uh, calculate the f net then you're going to need to do the cross product of that if you notice up here this x that's here this is not multiply it's the cross product so they're now telling you to use that information then to create an equation and that will find the cross product of your um, of your information here your forces in order to, for you to find uh, in this case the magnetic force the force due to the magnetic field okay uh, then they say you're gonna update the position again you can go back to uh, the previous um, lab that we did uh, the vPython lab that we did and it will show you will see in there that we did a position update uh, you need to do a momentum update also the momentum update is going to be very similar the only difference is here when you're doing the um, the momentum update you're gonna need to use the total net force and time in addition to a little bit more information in order to do the momentum update I'm gonna leave that to you all to figure out okay and then once you've done that they said then you're gonna add this in here so that you can see a trail behind your atom and then that's the end of the code okay then from there they ask you to do a few things um, so that you can see what the uh, what the results would be so I'm gonna just show a couple quick ones really quick here a couple uh, things here really quick uh, so for the first part it says what you're going to do is you're gonna change your magnetic field the X Y the Y is gonna be one okay so I'm gonna go over here on my right side I'm gonna change my magnetic field to be one in this area here uh, as a matter of fact before I change that let's let's just see what it looks like without um, as it is right now so as according to this there's no magnetic field there's no electric field it's just an atom that has an initial velocity to it so if I go ahead and run this over here You'll notice that that's all it is. The atom just goes across the screen over to the right side here in the positive x direction. Okay. Now, if I was to go ahead and apply a magnetic field in the y direction, which is what I did there by putting the one there, and I'm going to scale this. And the way I'm going to scale this is I'm going to use um, this value here that I've already predetermined. You can make it whatever you want to, as long as you can see it on the screen okay so now that I've saved that you're gonna notice here now when I run this here's what you end up seeing you see the the atom now going around the um, in a circle in uh, this plane here as you uh, look here you can see that there's a again a magnetic field the arrow was pointing upward okay and so once you've gathered that information there you can figure out they ask you to tell you uh, they ask you which whether it was going clockwise or counterclockwise and you can actually go ahead and put that information in okay then they're going to uh, they ask you here uh, if you change this to five what will happen again I'll leave that to you all to figure out um, they ask you to change this back from one to zero you can do that also but the point is again in this video I just wanted you to see how to go about using uh, vPython and where you can gather your information from in order to figure out certain things that weren't explicit in the lab. Okay, hopefully this was helpful. Again, my name is Dr. Clyde Letsom, and hopefully you found this, um, this video helpful uh, so that you can figure out how to do your vPython program. And um, perhaps uh, if you have any questions, uh, of course, for students in my class, you know, just shoot me an email. Uh, if you like what you saw here on this video, uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I also have my own personal website, ClydeLetsom.com. That's C-L-Y-D-E-L-E-T-T-S-O-M-E.com. And you can get more information on me there.